What's going on guys? Before we get into this video, I just want to quickly say that I messed up last night. I uploaded the video of putting the motor into the S14 when I wasn't supposed to. Uh, I hadn't done a thumbnail yet, so it obviously didn't have a thumbnail. The views weren't doing too well because videos that don't have thumbnails never do. So in a panic, instead of turning the video private, making the thumbnail and putting it back up, I just deleted the video. And uh, I don't actually have that video saved anymore. So that footage is unfortunately lost forever, but the engine's in the car. We are just days away from the tune. What's going on guys? Welcome to today's video. I'm on my way to Robbie's because the car has been there the past couple of days having the intercooler piping done. Robbie got that finished up. I dropped the car off, I think on Thursday afternoon and yeah, yesterday he smashed out the intercooler piping and he did my wastegate for me. Last night, Robbie actually made me a gearbox cross member as well. I tinkered away on the car yesterday, didn't film anything, just trying to more mentally prepared for today because today we're yeah, heading back to his workshop. We're going to try and get quite a bit done today. Thankfully Robbie is letting me use his workshop today because obviously at the uh, storage sheds we don't don't have power or anything so yeah no, shout out to Rory for letting me use the workshop today. Got my helper. Sure. <laughs> so I've made it down to Robbie's and I've already seen the inner cooler piping and it looks sick but I'll show you guys. Bear in mind the noise looks pretty sick. It's done it through here so it's going to be nice protected from this bath. Here's the headlights, a little bit of room around there for the obviously the motor for twisting. This inner cooler won't move at all, it's solid as, but obviously these pipes will move slightly when the motor does, but yeah, hopefully it's going to clear everything. It is reasonably tight, but yeah, no, it's, uh, should clear. And then we've got our wastegate here. Previously this came all the way down here, so basically this has just been shortened up and uh, we've had a screamer pipe put on. This is the gearbox cross member that uh, we made up the other night. It's a real quick box section, not the prettiest, but Cheap, easy. The gearbox cross member is pretty much dry. About to chuck that in, but while that has been drying, I've been working away on this side. And try and take this hub off it was a mission but we got there in the end i needed to get that off so i could take this dust shield off i want to keep this so i can use it on the other s14 when i run that through cert so yeah i didn't want to just cut it and it is too small to clear the big brake rotors um, that i want to be running on this so yeah had to take it off pretty much put all the side back together now i am going to start doing on the other side where she knows sam is she's going to start taking apart these arms Now, these hubs have never been off these knuckles. This stuff originally came off my other S14. So this has 30 years worth of seizing on it. So the other side was an absolute nightmare to get off. What we ended up having to do was take the axle out. I've now taken the bolts out, as you've just seen. I'm gonna connect this back up to all the arms. And then we're gonna chuck the wheel on and then we're gonna smack the wheel. And uh, yeah, it took even quite a, quite a lot of smacking to get the other hub off, but it did come off in the end. GG. Not even loose. Uh, no. Messed that one up, didn't you? You meant to say tight. Yeah, it was. <laughs> hands make light work. I don't even need to do anything either. <laughs> oh, <the dust> shield <laughs> comes off.
Now I've got the clutch pedal and the throttle cable on, I want to move on to the fuel system, which is one of the last things that I want to do today. I checked the gearbox cross member, it is actually still a little bit tacky. It's pretty cold, so I don't blame it for not drying, drying very quickly, but yeah. So now I'm gonna move on to the fuel system. So yesterday I went and picked up all fittings and stuff I needed and my hoses. Um, I ended up getting just rubber hoses for now. Um, I do want to go braided lines down the track. I do want to go E85 on the next motor setup. But for this one, we're just going to run normal pump gas. So yeah, just going to run standard rubber lines for now. Um, I actually already had some of these fittings as well. So doing it this way is a bit more cost effective. I'm going to set the surge tank up. My uh, lovely girlfriend, Sam, went and got me some uh, rubber grease before. So I can lube up all the O-rings and stuff and we don't have to worry about pinching them and ruining them. All right, so now we've got them, all the O-ring screws, we can tighten these ones up. This is our Aeroflow fuel pump. This is our main pump. This obviously takes the fuel from our surge tank and sends it to our fuel rail. This just has O-ring, just slips on like that. We've got this goes over top then we have a bunch of m5 nuts and spring washers and this is a aeroflow surge tank and in tank pump setup i actually got this ages ago for the other track car and uh ended up using a different surge tank setup that came in the other s14 that was pretty much already set up ready to go Now we've got the surge tank in, I'm going to put the two fittings that I need onto the fuel cell. So we've got our fitting down here at the bottom which is a dash 10 um, which goes to the lift pump which is just there. And we've got another one up here which is another dash 10. We don't want dash 10, we want dash 8 so I got these two reducers. Um, I went and got this Aeroflow one but there was the last one that they had in stock and tunes on Tuesday so I had to get this cheap one. Um, I'm just going to put the cheap one up here because it's this is just the return and we've got the Aeroflow one which has the nice o-ring in it. This one will go down here which will be for the lift pump. So we have a Dash 890. And we've got a 45 Dash 8. Um, up here, I'm going to be using this as our return to the fuel cell. So because we have a Dash 8 uh, fitting there, I'm putting this, which is a Dash 6, step up to a Dash 8. So we can run another 90 degree 8 Dash 8 there. So that will connect to there. And we've got two uh, 90 degree Dash 6s. Um, we've got one here. So this is for the lift pump. Then we've got our return from the rail, as Robbie's shouting in there. <laughs> Alright, so don't film it, but I just put uh, two fittings onto the fuel filter. But now we've just got another two fittings to screw onto there. These are just straight dash six, uh, dash six push lock fittings. With pretty much all of our fittings where they need to go, I'm now going to start cutting the fuel hose to length. So we've got our bigger fuel hose here for our dash 8 fittings. I'll start doing that first. May as well uh, do the return from the surge tank to the fuel cell. Alright, that's one hose down. So that's going to go like that. So the setup we got going on for the fuel pump here, I've got this little fitting with, uh, you'll see this little banjo fitting, and this is a fuel pressure regulator kind of thing, um, just so the pump doesn't flow too ridiculous. And once we got this banjo set up on, we've got a Dash 6 push lock fitting. 
now that we have pretty much all the lines that are solely back here done, it's now time to do the feed and the return line. The other night I came around while well, Robbie was doing my gearbox cross member and I actually put rib nut inserts uh, into the underside of the floor here so I can mount my fuel filter. I reckon it's a pretty good spot. It's uh, yeah, tucked away nice and up here. Um, the rail was like way down here. So yeah, if we go off track and hit a ripple strip, this is gonna be nice and safe. And it's also pretty easy, easily accessible too. Just gotta jack the car up to change the filter if we need to. So yeah, should be good. That's hey, gonna wrap the video here, guys. I've just finished editing this video. I'm super happy with how the uh, how the car's turning out. We're making huge progress. Uh, I actually made a ton more progress yesterday, which you guys will see in the next video. We pretty much have all the wiring sorted. But also, in the next video, you guys will hear it run for the first time, so stay tuned.